Welcome back, everyone, to another show of Ryan, Coop, and the Doc. I'm glad to be here with my buddies on my left, Arizona sports legend, Bruce Cooper. And on my right, Arizona dental legend, <laughs> Dr. Ken Snyder. Gentlemen, I, uh, you guys both have uniform. I guess I have a uniform on, too. It's just uh, I look like an accountant, and you guys look like uh, real professionals. Well, Not well, that accountants aren't real professionals, because they are. Well, I'm wearing a Diamondbacks uniform for a real reason here. Why? Tell I us. Mean, Tell us why, Coop. They brought what? you up. Yes, they have. <laughs> they I mean, need they, hitting. They, and, 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 and let me tell you something. 52 wins, 110 losses last year, a complete, utter dis, uh, embarrassment. I mean, only the Baltimore Orioles were worse. Yeah. And so now we're talking about a Diamondbacks team that, get this, they're right in the middle of the wild card hunt a third of the way through the season. Having said that, Doc and Ryan, what has surprised you guys the most about what we've seen from the Diamondbacks thus far? First, you, Doc. I would say their record. I thought by now they'd be maybe 15 um, games or so below 500, if not worse. And uh, the fact that they're hovering right there around 500. In fact, um, were not that the Dodgers were way out in front with the record they have, the Diamondbacks would actually have a shot that, you know, and, and they still could. I mean, it can never, yeah, teams have folded, but. And, and um, just, just to make a point there, like you're saying, they have played 11 games against the Dodgers thus far, and they've lost nine of them. So you're right. If, yeah. if you take those 11 games out, Diamondbacks are over 500. Yeah. Well, the, the just bizarre inconsistency is, is kind of getting me. Uh, we, we came out, um, I mean, we, we put one month together where we could just rip the cover off the ball but couldn't pitch, and then we put another month together that was the ex exact opposite. And so I think probably what we're seeing now in the third month of the season here is probably a little bit more about what you're going to get. The pitching, pretty good. It's, it's okay. They're middle of the pack, uh, but the hitting... Um, we got guys out, and we got some of the more veteran guys out. Um, that, that's going to be an issue. And I, I still don't think, unfortunately, because I'm taking my kids to games, but I, I just think we're going to be sellers at the trade deadline. I think we're going into another uh, trade excuse deadline. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Oh! We, what's bizarre and consistent is that you guys are talking about a team that's not even 500, and you, you completely <laughs> forgot about... The Stanley Cup playoffs. The Colorado Avalanche are going to win me another <laughs> ring. You can see it right there. And you guys completely ignore it, and you're talking about a team that hasn't won anything in, wait, since when? Never. 2001. Well, uh, you're talking about a team that's not even 500, and you know they're not hey, going to go hey, anywhere. Hey, I love Tori Lovello, but you know that team is never going to ever hey, win hey, anything. Hey, look here, Canuck. They, they have won more recently than the Avalanche have won a Stanley Cup. We're talking 2001. Well, that's when the Avalanche won a, won a Stanley Cup, so it's the same. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, we got one in October, and the Avalanche won in June, so yeah. it's still more I'm sorry. recent. The Colorado Avalanche are going to win a Stanley Cup, and you guys won't even talk about it. You ignore hockey like it doesn't exist. Can, can I tell you why? I mean, Cause, hey, cause Wayne, you're, is, Wayne, is the Avalanche going to win? See? Wayne Gretzky says they're going to you, win. Right? Well, you're well, sitting wow. there. It's 110 degrees, and you're sitting there in a... <laughs> <laughs> in a hockey, uh, I don't even know what is what it's is it. It's a sweater, well, and well, it's well, a sweater, and it's because I'm a fan. It's, hey, right? hey, it's well, because hey, I'm a fan, and this. I want He's another Absolutely ring. dead wrong about the Colorado Avalanche. First of all, the two-time defending Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning will be hoisting the Stanley Cup over. The Colorado Avalanche. So I don't know why he's so giddy about the abs. Just, I mean, maybe, maybe it's because they got a, a just former stop Coyote talking about baseball. goaltender. Is okay. that why? I, that was kind of like lots a, of Coyotes goaltenders yeah. in the playoffs. Chris was kind of like an avalanche that built up back there and just kind of spilled over right now. But I'm just glad I, he's I love a guy himself. who's passionate. Well, no, I love a guy who's passionate about his team. You know. So. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that that that's the Canuck, everyone. Uh, Chris Peterson, our. Our resident photographer, producer, yeah. director, he does it all. But just to reiterate, he's dead wrong about the abs being Stanley Cup champs this year. <laughs> just to reiterate, Coop knows nothing about hockey. 
<laughs> and never will. Well, you know, I, I, this calls for, I think, some kind of, uh, um, what's that they do, you know, that uh, whoever's wrong has to, I don't know, run around with uh, something, a lampshade on their head or something. I mean, what, like, we need something, we need some skin in the game here, guys. Hey, well, well, let me tell you something. For the avalanche to sweep the Edmonton Oilers, you already know that they had an easier path to get to the finals. Whereas we're talking about the two-time defending Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning, that's a harder road there. They don't have enough skill. You just no, watch because no you way. the Stanley Cup final was played in the Western Conference. <laughs> well, okay. I, how about this? How about the loser? Well, let, let, I, I've seen the last two Stanley Cup champions come out of the East. I'm just saying. How, how about this? The loser buys Ryan and I lunch. Deal. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. I just, I, I, I agree with Coop. I just, I think the Avalanche. You know, I, you're right. You're right. They're more skilled. I do think that, but. They're a little soft in front of the net there. Just remember, Ryan, I can turn your mic off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I know whose mic he will not turn off. Gentlemen, do you hear that? We got a knock on the door. Oh, my goodness. You know what? You're absolutely right. And we're in the middle of 100 days of summer, and mm. we're partnering with ABC 15 and the Water Drive. And guess who we're spotlighting? Yes, Joseph Yanis who drives a water truck around and makes sure all of our homeless guests out there have some nice refreshments. We're gonna hit a little area right here. Let's see what we got here. I've been doing this for seven years with a Celebrity Fight Night vehicle. Would you like some water and some food? Right now, this is, this is a very, very important service because of the heat that's coming upon us right now. We're gonna be hitting three-digit um, numbers, 101, 109, 110, depending on, as the month goes on forward. She's asleep, there's probably another one underneath the blanket. We're gonna put enough water there and some food and she'll probably hand it out to those when they wake up. Hydration is uh, the most important factor during the summer. If anybody wants any cold water, yeah. go to the van. We have a total of 24 routes. Each day is a different location within Maricopa County. Uh, with that said, if I was to see the individuals within today, they would not see me till 24 days down the road. We have cases of cold water to go free, along with uh, sack lunches and hygiene kits. These are quite some kits, everything from shampoo, Q-tips, band-aids, razors, iodine. We had about 80 to 140 individuals on a six hour shift. So we are, we are one, if not the only, agency that actually covers the county of Maricopa. We give them a whole case of water, cold water. There's gonna be a point in time where those cases are gonna be actually ice water, frozen water. And so at this point in time, they're sitting right now in the freezer, getting chilled for this upcoming week. A case of water will probably lasts them about three days. Our water is based on donations from the community, different organizations, different companies, different food chains. It's all um, in-kind donations that are given to us. Morning, got some sack lunches, hygiene kits. Yeah, I would say it's a very big priority, if not the only priority right now is to help out, help those that are in need of uh, the fluid, H2O water. Last year, um, 130 individuals died that were homeless in the community of uh, dehydration. Would you like some sack lunch, hygiene kits, water? Pretty much everything I've done in life has been in the context of helping the fellow human being. Yes, hey, uh, uh, right up here, hygiene kits and uh, water. All my all my careers were always helping, helping, helping. Do you want a resource information? Yeah. We are an agency who depends on volunteers. Without volunteers, we could never pull off this production. Hey, um, thank you for doing that. Oh, you're so welcome. I've always had this statement, I never left a soldier behind and I never will. And with that said, it's, it's, it comes from the heart. Nice to see you. Yes, pleasure's mine, like always. Uh, who would like to be out there suffering? Who would like somebody to come forward to help them out? I'm pretty sure all of us would be that way if we were in that kind of situation. It really didn't meet the need though out here, did it? No, it didn't. But uh, if you notice, we put a big dent in it.
You know, they say you can go a lot longer without food than you can water. And dehydration is one of the huge things here in the valley. We hear every day where people who are healthy and have a you know regular diet and they're climbing up and down Squaw Peak or Camelback Mountain and have to be rescued because they're dehydrated. And you can imagine being out in the heat all day long and uh, what that yeah. would mean. So Yeah, and one of the things that Yana said that really kind of struck me is that last year alone, over 130 of our homeless died because of heat. That's, uh, that, that number has to come way down. We, we're, we're, we're striving for zero, and it's going to start with water, like yeah. you talked about. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. And just another guy who's totally committed to the mission of serving other people and going out and finding them mm -hmm. to do it. Right, he's not waiting for people to come to him. So, uh, what a what a great story, and, and thank you guys for for sharing that. Um, Coop, yeah. What's next? What's next? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we got to deal with Doc and his adopted patient. I mean, I, I don't know who it is this week, but we'll, we'll find out in just a few. We need someone to adopt Ryan we here. We need someone come adopt me. <laughs> we have a young boy here. He's a 10-year-old boy. His name's Urim. And um, he comes from a pretty large family. There's two other brothers, and he has twin sisters. And so there's five of them in the family. And of course, um, you know, the, the dad works a job, but it's, you know, they're, they're struggling to get by with five kids and, and uh, in today's economy especially. He has um, some retained baby teeth. You can also see his two front teeth are drastically uh, protruding. We used to call that, and you know, we, we talk about sometimes the kids get teased because of their appearance. Uh, he needs some help. Uh, he has some over-retained baby teeth, which can be pretty tender. You know, you're chewing on them and they haven't quite come out. We need mm. to get those out. You can see he has severe orthodontic problems. Now, on the outside, you know, with the x-rays and all the things you have to do and the molds you have to do to, to get braces, what would you guess it would cost on the outside? I'm going to say 13,000. Mm. Boy, I was going to say 12, but that's too close, so I'll say I'll I'll say 11. Okay, actually $12,200. <laughs> it was too right, close. <laughs> right right in the middle. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, and, and you know, the poor family, I mean they they want this. They're good parents. They want this for their children. That's just beyond their means, you know, this yeah. would mean everything to this young boy. So here at St. Vincent de Paul, uh, what do you think we could do all that for? I'm gonna say 800 bucks. Ooh, that's really low. I'll go 1,500. Okay, uh, actually um, 2,000, roughly 2,000 right on the nose, yeah. So, well, um, you know, gosh darn, you set 12, and, I, and, and I've just figured that maybe we could do it for 1,200, but I said, well, you know, since we're only doing costs only, I want to take a stab at 800. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the point there is a good one, Coop, because our dental clinic works magic, right? And, and they're cutting costs by 90% in a lot of cases. You know, I think the official number is if you put in a dollar to the St. Vincent de Paul Dental Clinic, we'll provide like eight and a half dollars of market value services. Yeah. So what an incredible investment uh, in our community and in, and in and in kids like Urim. Yeah, and we, um, here's the beauty of it too. If there's more than one child in the family that needs braces, um, we'll squeeze the other kids in. Because for, for these families, just to afford even one child, I mean, it's huge. Yeah, you know? that's and a lot. So, um, yeah, hopefully there's, uh, and I know there's a lot of good people out there, um, and hopefully someone will want to adopt Urim and um, you know, help him with his, with his dental work. Well, you know, I, I'm feeling that Ryan's about to hit me with another one of his Ryan's <laughs> riddles, but I have to say this. I am so proud of myself. I am so peacock proud of myself. It's not even funny. I, I nailed the last one. Should and we? I, and I kind of was a little slow about figuring it out, but I nailed should it. Should we remind people what it was so you can celebrate again? Oh, uh, sure. What sounds like a sneeze, a but chew. it's made out of leather? A chew. A shoe. How about that? A shoe. I got it. I got it. Coop, Thank you very much. Thank Coop, you very much. here you are. All right. Now. All right. Okay, revel, now revel in that victory because okay. I think we're about to go on a cold streak here. Uh-oh. Coop. Okay. Here we go. What goes from Z to A? Z to A? What goes from Z to A? Do you mean like the flip-flop of A to Z? 
the alphabet. I know, I know the alphabet can't go from Z to A. That's, Z to that A. is the correct way to think about it, Z, yeah. yeah. Z to A. What goes from Z to A? All right. All right, so, you know, I look, I, I got to admit, it felt good to revel in victory. <laughs> I, I don't even have a clue. This makes no, this makes, what goes from Z to A? Ladies and gentlemen, finally, you can email us because oh, Coop doesn't have the answer to this one. If you get it, we're going to, nah, we'll give you Doc Snyder's hat. Hey, Doc, why not? he'll sign it for you, um, <laughs> and uh, it'll it'll be an artifact that you can put up there with all your jerseys and signed balls. Uh, I'll give them a new hat. Okay, okay, a even new better, hat. even better. Yeah. Email us. Z to A. While no, Coop chews on that one. No so, hey, speaking of chewing stuff. I bet we're going to have some question about uh, dentistry and di <laughs> just one time. I want someone to ask, hey, Coop, where do you get that haircut? Or where, Ryan, where do you buy those shirts? Hey, nice and easy one. Give us an easy one. <laughs> but here we go. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's Doc's mail. Most of us are here. <laughs> I don't, I didn't know that was, look, we don't exactly run the tightest ship around here. We just, whoever wants to say something can say something at any time. But, but what I know is that you all want to say something because you keep writing into Doc. Doc, what do these people want to know now? Oh, man, I'll tell you. You never know. You never know. It's the Pony Express. <laughs> yep, here they come. Here they come out of the chute. For a second, I thought there wasn't anything in there. Maybe we didn't get any mail. The mailman's been slacking off lately. No way. No way. He always delivers to this show. Dear Doc, where did Ryan get his hair cut and Coop get that shirt? <laughs> Finally. Uh, dear Doc, are there certain foods that are better for your teeth than others? Oh, boy. Well, we all know that brushing and flossing and, uh, you know, good home care is very important. But you can actually go a long way to protecting your teeth and preventing um, cavities and other problems by uh, some of the foods you avoid. Um, interesting enough, first of all, rule number one. Sugar, candy. Do not chew ice. Oh, <laughs> do not chew ice. That's a biggie. Even the sonic yeah. ice? Do not chew ice because... Well, why is that? Well, an ice cube, you bite down on it, and boom, you break your tooth off. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty solid, Coop. What about Ask the Canuck. He's yeah, been on yeah. the ice before. He knows, hey, whenever you snow plow net, don't chew any, right? Keep your mouth shut. Um, citrus fruit, okay? Um, things like, for example, grapefruit juice and also lemon juice um, are very bad for you. They have vitamin C, which is great, but uh, believe it or not, the acid in there can actually erode your teeth. In fact, when I was in private practice, one of the early years. Well, well let me ask you, what about orange juice? Orange juice is actually better. It's okay. not quite as acidic. I do drink, I do, uh, uh, beside the other two, grapefruit and lemon, I, yeah. which I don't really and drink, it, I do drink orange and juice. And again, with all this in moderation, you know, is, is good with anything. But um, I had a girl, uh, about the second year I was in private practice, her mother brought her in, she was an eighth grader, and she had no enamel on her uh, six front teeth. No enamel at all. And I asked her mom, I said, was, this, was she born this way, you know, when they came in? She said, no, they were fine. They don't know what happened. And of course, they were very sensitive to any hot and cold. And, um, you know, wow, I tried to think, what could it be, what could it be? And finally, uh, what we came up with is she sucked on lemons uh, throughout the day. She loved lemon. And she wow. put the lemon right up there and sucked on it, took the enamel all right off her teeth, hmm. you know. Um, another thing, you know, chewy candy, things like, for example, uh, taffy, juicy fruit, caramels. Don't, um, don't say dots, Doc. I love dots. Dots, are they okay? Um, in yeah. moderation. And yeah. if you brush and floss, because all that gooiness, what it does, it sticks in the grooves in your teeth, even if you think you know, you've chewed it all, and in between your teeth, and it's a, um, a huge um, area where bacteria accumulate and cause decay. <laughs> Hard candy. <laughs> no candy. No Jolly, fun. And this is where I'll say make an exception. Um, you know, with the Jolly Ranchers and that knife, you're going to suck on it. That's one thing. But if you're going to chew on it, um, I used to tell uh, the dental students when they were trying to get a temporary crown off and they couldn't get it off, I'd say, give the patient a Jolly Rancher, boom, it'll be right off. And, you know, there's a reason why they call them jaw breakers and they break teeth. Typically what happens, someone, they always come in and they say, you know, I was eating bread and my tooth broke. Well, no, they were probably prior to that, you were eating a Jolly Rancher or something, and then the bread, the gooiness is what actually then caused the tooth to come apart. This is going to surprise you. 
Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Don't eat. He shouldn't People have done named that. Peter. <laughs> no, he shouldn't have done that. Oh. Why? <laughs> because <laughs> pickles, actually, um, you know, because of the pickling process, that salty and that sour taste and all that. Dude, Doc, you um, take all the fun out of eating they, good food. Th they did a study. The number one solid food to actually wear down the enamel of your tooth was pickles. Now, have you ever noticed, like, they'll take, because of vinegar, there's vinegar in it. Anyone said, you know, you want to clean the crud off your shower head or your, um, you know, the faucets and that, get a rag, vinegar. put vinegar on it. Yeah, so you can see how corrosive it is. Um, soda. Dun, 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 dun. Now, again, anything in moderation, but soda has a lot of acid. In, in dental school, they made us uh, take a can of Coke, <laughs> pour it into a glass, and put extracted teeth into it, and you come back a week later, and it's almost totally dissolved. I mean, it's amazing. Did you know you can use Coke to clean your hubcaps? Yes, I've heard that. Yeah, and it's Wanna true. Want to know how many times I've cleaned my cup, hubcaps? Because <laughs> no. I'm drinking that Coke. No, <laughs> okay. no. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to drink a Coke or a Diet Coke, um, if you have it with a meal where it's kind of, you know, being washed off your, your teeth with the, the meal and, you know, kind of, and, and de the acid's being neutralized, much better than if you just sit there and gulp down. You see these kids with 44 ounces of Coke and they're walking around and, you know, their teeth are a mess, you know. Um, this is going to surprise you a little bit. Well, Doc, I mean, that's just, can you give me a good food that's good for your teeth? I mean, you, you're, you're ruining my whole diet. That's going to be the next show. Okay. The next yeah. show, we're coming back yeah. with the good we're, stuff. We're going to take the other half of the food pyramid the next show. Doc's we're killing, covering one Doc's half. killing my diet. One, one last one. If you're a fan of Uncle Cracker. Uncle who? <laughs> the, you never heard the, of Uncle Cracker? The musician? Yeah, Chris Rock. You know, you know, Uncle. Cr I mean, I thought I was the old guy here. Chris Rock isn't Uncle. Chris Cracker. Rock. Not Chris That's, Rock. It's Kid Rock. Kid Rock. Kid Rock. Kid Rock. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Kid Rock. <laughs> I got my rocks. Bit. <laughs> Chris Rock's the guy who got slapped uh, at the Oscars. I think. I, I. I think after this list, your rocks are all jing, you know, jingled up up there. But anyway, well, well, crackers. Kid, Kid Rock's never been slapped by Will Smith, though, right? No, not yet. Uh -huh. Not yet. Uh, but anyway, if you binge out on crackers, you know, it makes like a gooey paste on your teeth and, again, kind of hangs in the grooves and in between your teeth, and it's a great place for bacteria to form and cause decay. So anyway, those are a few of the things. Now, again, anything other than the real hard candy, chewing it in the ice, um, in moderation, um, is not a bad thing. But if you're sitting there eating pickles all day, don't come see me. Okay, Coop? Or sucking on lemons, right? Yeah, no sucking on lemons. <laughs> hey, it's it's it sounds like um, my steady diet in college of, of Pepsi and Skittles would not be Dr. Snyder approved. And when you add in Cheetos, I don't know if that's in the cracker category or not. I'm just all a mess. But that's what created this beautiful specimen in front of you. And I know all thumbs up there. That's right. And uh, Coop, Doc. It's been uh, a joy to go through this side of the food pyramid with you uh, <laughs> yeah. and to talk some sports, to learn a little bit about hockey, uh, and to just commiserate over and over about what's going on in Valley <laughs> Baseball. Um, but but I, I know you're outraged because there's, there's no answer to the Z to A riddle. Oh, there's an answer. No, there really can't be. You know, and you know when we're going to tell it? In our next episode. Doc. If you're true to your teeth, they won't be false to you. Have a good one. Hey, Chris, last time I saw icing, it was on a cake. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>